Few names in the annals of the history of the Wild West struck fear into the hearts of local inhabitants and legal professionals as John Wesley Hardin did. Hardin was rumored to be the most deadly bandit in the West, and he was responsible for a string of brutal robberies, murders, and killings that caused panic along the border. Who exactly was this man, and what did he do to earn the reputation of being the most infamous outlaw of his era? Within the confines of this video, we will delve into the storied life of John Wesley Hardin, the notorious criminal whose name continues to reverberate throughout the pages of Western literature, early years and experiences. In the year 1853, John Wesley Hardin was born in the vicinity of Bonham, Texas. His father, James Gibson Gip Hardin, was a Methodist preacher and a former roundabout driver. His mother, Mary Elizabeth Dixon, was a highly cultured blonde woman whose charity was a key element of her personality, as described by Hardin in her autobiography. His father, James Gibson Gip Hardin, was a former roundabout driver. As James Gibson traveled throughout Central Texas on his preaching travels, the Hardin family relocated numerous times. But in 1859, they made their home in Sumter, which is located in Trinity County in the state of Texas. Due to the fact that Texas was only a few years away from becoming a state of the United States, this was a time in the state that was marked by significant social and political upheaval. Hardin's formative years were marked by the nomadic existence of his family, as well as the unstable political climate that prevailed in Texas while he was a child and adolescent. These aspects of his upbringing would play a role in the formation of his defiant and aggressive personality, first instances of violent conflict. In the year 1867, John Wesley Hardin was a student at his father's school when he was involved in a violent altercation with another student named Charles Slaughter. Slaughter accused Hardin of writing graffiti on a wall at the school and of making derogatory comments to a female student who was enrolled in their class. Hardin refuted the charges and suggested that Slaughter was the one who was actually responsible for writing the graffiti. When Slaughter attacked Hardin with a knife, the situation rapidly deteriorated into a more dangerous one. Hardin nearly succeeded in slaying Slaughter by stabbing him to death with his own knife while acting in self-defense. Because of this episode, Hardin was dangerously close to being kicked out of school. Despite this, encounters of this nature were not uncommon in the chaotic and violent milieu that characterized the Wild West. John Wesley Hardin, then 15 years old, defeated Major Holshausen, a freed slave who had been owned by his uncle, was in a wrestling contest that took place in November 1868. It is alleged that Major ambushed Hardin the following day, yelling at him while wielding a stick and confronting him in secret. Hardin asserted that he was acting in self-defense when he pulled a pistol and shot Major a total of five times. Major was one of three guys who were hurt in the attack and he passed away three days later. Because Hardin's father was concerned that his son would not get a fair trial in the state that was seized by the Union, he instructed him to go into hiding. After some time, the authorities were able to determine his whereabouts, and three Union soldiers were dispatched to take him into custody. Hardin chose to engage his pursuers, even though his brother Joseph had told him that they were getting closer, and he ended up shooting and murdering all three of them with a gun. Despite being well aware that returning home would result in his capture, he went on the run with the notorious bandit Frank Pope in the Pisgah region of Navarro County, Texas, a bloody track of evidence. Benjamin Bradley was frustrated by Hardin's constant success at the card game they were playing in Towash Hill County, Texas in January 1870, and he accused Hardin of cheating throughout the game. This charge sparked a heated confrontation between the two, during which Hardin fired a shot, abruptly ending Bradley's life. It didn't take long for word of Hardin's skill as a deadly gunslinger to spread throughout the region, and he soon became famous for his lightning-fast draw and pinpoint shooting. After that, he was involved in several other gunfights and altercations, most of which ended in fatalities. Hardin became involved in a dispute with a guy named Charles Webb in the town of Comanche, Texas, about an issue considered unimportant. This was a significant event that took place. After the dispute turned into a gunfight, Hardin ended up taking Webb's life by shooting him. Another infamous event occurred when Hardin was involved in a gunfight with a band of Mexican cowboys 
who were out for vengeance after one of their companions died. Hardin was outnumbered, but he still managed to eliminate four of his opponents while evading harm himself. It wasn't just gunfights that Hardin was involved in during his criminal career. In addition to this, he was a member of other criminal gangs, including the infamous Taylor Sutton gang, and he was involved in the theft of cattle. Hardin's reputation as a deadly outlaw was further cemented due to the gang's participation in a number of robberies and acts of violence. The taking of captivity and placement in prison. As a direct consequence of the illegal activities he had been partaking in, John Wesley Hardin was captured in month of May in the year 1874. His name was Charles Webb, and he was a deputy sheriff in Texas. The Texas Rangers found him down in Florida, and they arrested him for his role in Webb's death. It turned out that Webb was the same person who had been killed by him earlier in the gunfight in Comanche. After being extradited to Texas, Hardin stood trial for a number of charges, including murder in that state. He was tried on these charges in Texas. Nevertheless, despite his reputation as a ruthless outlaw, Hardin's charm and eloquence worked in his favor throughout the entirety of the trial. This was especially true during the closing arguments. This was a result of the fact that he was an outstanding orator in public settings. He attempted to justify his life of crime by claiming that he was forced to live a lawless existence by the harsh conditions that prevailed in the Wild West. He accomplished this by retaining an accomplished defense attorney and portraying himself as a different person to the court. The jury was convinced by his reasoning and as a consequence, the charges of murder that were brought against him were thrown out. The afterlife and its impact. After being acquitted, John Wesley Hardin made efforts to live a more compliant life with the law. After completing his legal education and earning a passing score on the bar exam, he became a qualified attorney in the state of Texas. He established a family by getting married and having a number of children. Despite this, it was difficult to ignore the pull of his history as a criminal. Although none of the confrontations or gunfights in which Hardin was involved ended in fatalities, he continued to be involved in a variety of altercations and gunfights. He became even better known after writing his autobiography, The Life of John Wesley Hardin, chronicling his life. Unfortuitously, Hardin's bloody past eventually came up with him on August 19, 1895, when he was murdered in El Paso, Texas, after being shot many times. He was only 42 years old at the time. There are a number of divergent reports of what transpired on the day he passed away, which contributes to the air of mystery that still surrounds those events. The reputation that John Wesley Hardin earned during the Wild West for being the most dangerous outlaw lives on even to this day. His life, which was notorious for its bloodshed and resistance, has been memorialized in countless works of literature, films, and tales. His acts were cruel and destructive, but they also serve as a reminder of the lawlessness and wildness that characterized life on the American frontier during that period. That's all for today. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. See you next time.